Hey, John Hickok here. Got the Dan Wesson Valor Commander. It commands Valor. And we're going to shoot it today. Have some fun with it. And yes, I am the son. Uh, the son of Hickok45. And yes, dad is fine. People always ask when they see me in the videos, where's dad? What's, what's wrong? I hope everything is okay. Uh, we've, I've been showing up in the videos at about the same rate for the past three years now. So the real question is, where have you been? Where have you been? Uh, you haven't been paying attention, okay? This is just a thing that we're doing. Um, so nothing, nothing to fear. Everything is just fine. Um, and uh, people will ask me sometimes, like, how do you get to shoot on Hickox Range? Like, not knowing that I'm the son. Maybe because I lived right there for 18 years of my life. That could be one reason. So, okay. Now that we've covered all that stuff. We've got the Valor. Uh, Dan Wesson. As you know, Dan Wesson's have an incredible reputation as a, uh, as a 1911. Kind of a higher price range. Uh, but not as high as, you know, like the top tiers into the, like the three... You know, 4,000, you know, Nighthawks, Wilson Combats, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. But let's go ahead and shoot it, take a few shots with it, and then I'll tell you some more things about it. And if we have over there. All right, let's shoot it now. I always like to start on the stop sign. I don't know why. It's just my thing, I guess. Oh, yeah, brass fell back in there. Not a problem, really. It's on the last round. Okay, so uh, the Dan Wesson, as you can see, it is stainless. It's a uh, forged stainless, um, all steel, you know, so it's a heavy, it's a heavy 1911. Um, it's not a full size, it's a commander, as I mentioned earlier. So it's, it's got the uh, four, four and a quarter inch barrel. Uh, you know, same basically full size grip. It's not bobbed. A lot of the Dan Wessons have a little, a little bobbed uh, grip down there. And you know, Dad has a Kim uh, not a Kimber, uh, a uh, Ed Brown like that. It's a Cobra Carry. That's why I tried to say Kimber. Um, it's bobbed down there, and I don't like those. I, I mean, they they feel fine when I pick them up, but I don't, for some reason I, I can't shoot those very well. Uh, so I, I stay away from those, even though they do make they do make sense for carry. I, I totally get it. Uh, but I, I stay away from those. It's got really nice uh, front and back strap checkering. You know, nice, nice beaver tail you expect on something like this. You know, just a, just a nice, nice finish. We've got night sights up here. It's we've got the two dot uh, system there. Um, I like that it doesn't have the ambi safety. That's something that kind of bugs me on a lot of 1911s, uh, just because. You know, it it gets in my way, and I feel like if I was in a situation where my right arm was disabled and I had to shoot with my left and use the safety, and I, I could figure it out. Um, you know, most of the time we're going to be shooting this on range, so it's kind of kind of annoying. Now, one major factor about this that I haven't mentioned yet, because I don't want to scare off all the 1911 people, but it is in nine millimeter. Okay, but it's it's 2019. We got to be open-minded. You know, in 2019, a 1911 can be in nine millimeter. We should accept uh, accept that for what it is. Okay. Now, uh, this gun, I will say this though. This this gun um, attracted me as a range gun. I was not buying this, intending to use it for concealed carry, uh, because for a nine millimeter, it's it's very heavy. But it's just a really fun range gun. They've got nine rounds in the magazine. It's a sweet shooter. Um, now, if this was in 45 ACP, I think it would be, uh, it would make a little bit more sense for carry because, you know, there's a lot of 1911 haters out there say that's an old antiquated design and there's definitely some validity to that, depending on what you're talking about. But one thing I've always said about 1911s is I feel like um, when it comes to something chambered in 45 ACP, it's one of the, the thinnest, you know, guns out there that's chambered in and 45 ACP, um, you know, so in that weight, you know, helps you with, with 45, and you don't really need the weight uh, with with nine millimeters. So uh, that would be a negative for this thing if if you were going going to carry it. I think. 
All right, let's load it up. Well, I'll say more things while we're loading. Um, I'll show you the box. This is the box that it came with. Nice little Dan Weston box here. Uh, comes with you know the lock and a sticker and the manual. There's actually a thing in here that shows you how to. Uh, where's it at? It's very important. Um, it shows you how to insert the magazine. It's very important stuff. So you're gonna definitely need that if you buy it. it comes with this free holster right here. It's a really nice um, addition. But uh, so Dan Dan Wesson, I'm not gonna give you like all of the history on Dan Wesson. Um, but basically, the kind of the basic idea is they started in the late 60s and they mostly made revolvers and then they started making 1911s at around 2000 and then they were purchased by CZ in 2005 and uh, from what everything I've seen that's been kind of a, a positive because now they're able to make them on a much larger scale which is very cool and I also want to mention too uh, our, our other supporter of the channel atmex.com they are uh, one of the largest online retailers for precious metals, everything from gold to copper, you, know, you name it, silver, all that good stuff is over there. A lot of neat stuff, old coins, new coins, um, just a really neat site, definitely check it out, apmex, apmex.com. We've got a link in the description, so go to that. Um, so, you know, that, the CZ, you know, buyout and everything. I don't, of course, I don't know all the particulars on it, and uh, but to me, what it seems like is kind of an example of a, a positive situation. You know, sometimes when a bigger company buys out a smaller company with its guns or anything else, often it can, you know, you can see like a loss in in quality, and it can be a negative thing. But in this case, it seems to have been a positive. Not that the quality was like bad or something bef before the CZ buyout it, it's just it's these things still have a great reputation you know for the past you know however many years that is I don't do math um they've, they've had a lot of you know everyone no one can say good enough things about these guns it seems like in the price range that they're in you know this was about <clears throat> 1500 bucks roughly give or take and they tend to be kind of around that it seems like um for the most part and what it sort of seems like with the Dan Weston, what you're getting is something that is like most of the way to though that upper echelon of like Ed Brown. That was weird. I thought it was a bee. <laughs> a fly got in my hand when I did that and it buzzed. I didn't like that. Uh, uh, Ed Brown, now, I'm, now I've, I can't think straight. <laughs> I was like, a, so all right, we're talking about guns. That's why we're here. Um, the Ed Browns, the Nighthawks, um, the um, that fly messed me up. I think that fly was sent here by the anti-gunners to try to ruin me. And it probably implanted a uh, chip in my hand. And it's going to track me and how many guns I shoot and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's what's going on in my head right now. Uh, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this is a, this is like the, the last step before you get to the Nighthawks, the Ed Browns. Um, and the uh, Wilson Combats, you know, so it's it's a, a very a very nice gun, and for most people, this would be as good of a 1911 that as you as you might need. And I'm not, I know it seems like when you're every time you're positive about a gun, it seems like you're trying to sell people on it. But this this is just what a lot of people seem to think about these. And uh, you know, the ones that I've shot, this is the first one I've ever owned. But the ones that I've shot, it kind of confirms that. I mean, they're they're nice, and and uh, you can get them in. And the configuration that you like and they're sweet guns all right let's shoot it some more i hope i won't get attacked by any more uh cia flies or anything like that um let's take out some of these two liters right after that bolt uh what else we got uh, that bucket right there. All right, let's load up again. Then I'm going to take it over on the other hill. Try to hit some things with it. I don't know if I did. I mention that it has uh, VZ grips in it, which those are have a great reputation. They're very thin. Look how thin these things are. Very thin grips, which um, it's fine. It doesn't. 
I mean, they could stand to be maybe a little bit thicker, just a tad thicker. And I think the gun might feel a little better. Um, but, you know, it's not a big deal. It's, it's fine. There's definitely an advantage to the grip being thin, of course. Uh, especially if you're going to try to carry it, which, like I said, I, I mean, you'd be fine to carry this gun. It's, I think it would be as reliable as you could expect almost any 9 millimeter 1911 uh, to be. It'd just be the, the weight issue, you know. Um, and, you know, you have nine, nine rounds plus one. That's, that's not bad, but considering how heavy of a gun it is, I mean, it's, it's still thin. It's still a thin 1911. It's going to be thinner than like a Glock 19 or something like that. But uh, my guess is it would weigh a good bit more. I could break it down, but, it, you know, it doesn't have the, uh, uh, it, you know, it has the regular bushing on it and everything. So it's, it's you know, pretty standard pretty standard 1911 you know stuff you know so I'm not gonna mess with that all right okay let's uh, shoot over there on the other hill Start with a gong. All right, see if I can hit that uh, red square over there. All right. Um, that's a pretty small target, but I'm going to try that. There's a piece of center block on the barrel. I'm going to see if I can uh, hit it at least once with what I've got left in the mag. Look at that. First shot. All right. Let's uh let's just shoot over here now. I can't I can't outdo that. The thing shoots pretty well, I have to say. It's got a nice trigger, but it's not like crazy light or anything. It's just a nice nice trigger. And you know, and being a full steel 1911 in nine millimeter, it uh, you know really makes it shoot nice. I mean, it's like very, very minimal recoil. A gun like this would be great for someone you know that's new to shooting, just getting into into firearms. Um, it's just a really nice looking gun. I'm mean, gonna get some more close-ups of it before we wrap up here. You know, just a really nice gun. <clears throat> you know, good old American-made. Solid steel, 1911. You know, um, I know it's uh, it's not 45 as John Browning intended, and a lot of true 1911 lovers probably, um, are, you know, would like to throw this video in the trash and burn it along with this 1911. But you know, a nine, a nine millimeter 1911 can be a nice, nice, fun, fun gun. I've shot several over the years, and, and they're a lot of fun. But in general, I would definitely prefer 45. You know, I only own, uh, let's see, I have two 1911s, the, the original one that I have um, that's like the 1918 original and, and this one. But if I owned, let's say, 10 1911s, then probably only like two of them would be 9mm. That gives you some idea. So I definitely prefer 45. One of them would be 10mm, it would have to be. But, um, all right, well, I guess that was all I wanted to say about the, uh, the good old Valor Commander, Dan Wesson, 9mm, uh, 1911. Uh, really nice gun. I'm glad to have it. I think it's one that I'll probably keep for a long time. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope that you support the people who support us when it makes sense for you because it really helps us out a lot. And we appreciate you guys most of all. And see you next time. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall, 
Uh, Dad has been using Dialostol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballstall.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the Internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.